Throughout the day, we have been following the story of a dive boat which caught fire off of Santa Cruz Islands in the Channel Islands. KCLU's Lance Orozco is joining us live right now as we anticipate a briefing from the Coast Guard with the latest. Lance, what do we know? Well, incredibly difficult, Dave. Here's what we know at this point. We know that uh, we have four people confirmed dead, 30 still missing, and then five crew members rescued. Now, this started uh, early this morning, about 3.30 in the morning, boat off the coastline of Santa Cruz Island. Uh, There was a fire on board this boat, the Conception, out of Santa Barbara, and the five crew members were able to jump off the boat, and they were rescued. But the uh, 34 passengers below deck were sleeping at the time, and again, four of them Four of them at this point confirmed dead. We don't know specifically names, but we do know that four died. We know that 30 are still considered missing. Now, I'm at the uh, Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department headquarters right now, and we're expecting a briefing. This is the first real briefing we've had since this incident happened. There was a little one this morning, but we didn't know much then. Eric Rainey, who's with the Sheriff's Department, is at the podium right now, and he's just basically sort of introducing the setup, and we're going to go to him in just a second. In fact, uh, what we're going to hear first is we're going to hear Sheriff Bill Brown and then somebody from uh, Santa Barbara County Behavioral Health, and then we do expect to hear from somebody from the Coast Guard. I'm not sure who we're going to hear from from the Coast Guard in just a couple of minutes, but uh, the Sheriff Bill Brown is going to lead things off and sort of give us away some of what we know. So, uh, Duncan, let's throw it back to in the studio and hear Sheriff Bill Brown. If you need to after, please see me for those requests, and I'll try to coordinate th- that for you. And, uh, again, we appreciate you being here, and I'd like to introduce Santa Barbara County Sheriff Bill Brown. Thank you, Lieutenant Rainey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the press, for being here today. Uh, Before I begin my remarks, I just would like to acknowledge our local elected officials who have come to show their support today. We are joined by Congressman Salud Carbajal, Senator Hannabeth Jackson, Assemblymember Monique Lamone, and two of our county supervisors from the 2nd District, We have Supervisor Greg Hart and from the 3rd District, Supervisor Joan Hartman. So I'm going to give you a uh, quick overview of the incident and what occurred uh, early today. I'm going to then hand it off to Coast Guard Captain who is going to talk about the rescue effort that uh, went underway this morning. Uh, That will be followed by uh, some remarks from our fire chief to talk about the Santa Barbara and Ventura County fire response to the incident. Our Santa Barbara County District Attorney will have some uh, comments for you as will Assistant Chief Ryan Smith from the Office of Emergency Services and then uh, Suzanne Grimacy will talk about what we're doing for victims families. Um, The incident today uh, began at uh, approximately 3.30 a.m. The Coast Guard sector in Los Angeles received a mayday call uh, that was from a fully engulfed 75-foot commercial diving vessel that was off the coast of Santa Cruz Island. Crews from the U.S. Coast Guard, the uh, Ventura County Fire Department and the uh, Vessel Assist Organization responded. The Coast Guard uh, launched aircraft as well as boats and uh, located a vessel that was fully involved in flames in the Platts Harbor area on the north side of Santa Cruz Island. The crews were actively fighting the fire uh, when the vessel began to sink at approximately 7.20 a.m. this morning. 39 souls were reported to be on board that vessel when it left Santa Barbara. Five victims were subsequently rescued uh, and uh, during the initial response and have been transported uh, to Ventura, were transported to Ventura Harbor. This particular dive trip that the boat was on was a three-day trip uh, that began August the 31st. It was scheduled to end tomorrow morning. Uh, It was advertised as a Labor Day weekend North Channel Islands dive trip. The uh, boat was scheduled to depart Santa Barbara Harbor at 4 a.m. on Saturday the 31st and return on Monday the 2nd, as I say, in the morning. The dive company chartered the boat and the crew from Truth Aquatics, a Santa Barbara Harbor-based operation that has been in existence since 1974. Uh, 
So far, the uh, in Santa Barbara, I am the coroner as well as the sheriff. So our coroner's bureau has been involved in this uh, event because four victims have been recovered thus far uh, as deceased. They have been transported to our coroner's bureau. We can only identify them at this point as two adult males and two adult females. Rescue and recovery efforts on the scene have located an additional four victims on the ocean floor in close proximity to the vessel. And we have dive teams that are in the water as we speak that are working to attempt a recovery of their remains. But the, the boat remains uh, unstable and I'm not sure when we're gonna be able to recover uh, those bodies as well as any more that may be within the vessel. The Coroner's Bureau is responsible for identifying the victims, for notifying the next of kin, and for determining the cause and manner of death. We have asked for assistance due to the sizable nature of this incident and have received support from the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office and from the Sacramento County Coroner's Office as well. The four victims that we have recovered as of now will need to be identified through DNA and that may take some time. The condition of the remains that are recovered subsequently will determine the speed at which we are able to identify any of the victims. Our hearts go out to the families of the victims of this terrible tragedy. Uh, we understand the tremendous burden that they are under right now as they wait to determine exactly what happened and what uh, condition and situation their loved ones are in. Uh, we will be working diligently to try to get them as much information as possible as soon as possible. We've also set up a family assistance center which is designed to uh, provide uh, specialized assistance to family members of uh, victims of this tragedy. Um, I am going to now turn this uh, over to Captain Monica Rochester of the United States Coast Guard, uh, Los Angeles sector, and she will uh, give you a briefing on the rescue effort that uh, was undertaken this morning. Can you tell us your name and last Yeah, my name is Sheriff Bill Brown. Common spelling. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Captain Monica Rochester, Captain of the Port for Coast Guard Sector Los Angeles, Long Beach. We have been fully involved uh, with this incident since, zero th since 3 30 a.m. Uh, we continue to have Coast Guard vessels uh, continue our search and rescue efforts um, along the shorelines of Santa Cruz Island. Uh, we also have our Coast Guard aircraft that is also engaged in providing cover to ensure uh, that we have uh, the full swath or full breadth of the area to be um, to be uh, searched. Uh, we've also provided a safety zone, which is approximately a mile, which provides uh, safety to the responders um, so that we don't have interference from other vessel traffic or any other uh, incursion into the area where the incident has occurred. Additionally, we have also established a 3,000 foot ceiling uh, for a temporary flight restriction. So again, this is all to protect the, the first responders. This isn't a day that we wanted to wake up to for Labor Day, and it's a very tragic event. Um, and we will search uh, all the way through the night into the morning, but I think we all should be prepared um, to move into um, the, the worst outcome. But um, those are our efforts right now, and they will continue through the night and into the morning. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mark Hartwig, H-A-R-T-W-I-G. I'm the county fire chief and county fire warden for the county of Santa Barbara. I want to start by telling you that the hearts of this uh, community are heavy uh, as the families deal with this. For uh, representing those uh, in the water and on the ground and those that are supporting this incident uh, today and into the future, um, we are... Uh, we are saddened um, with the families and, and those that are close to the, the folks in, um, affected by this tragedy. 
From the fire side, um, we were uh, that, uh, shortly after the May Day, uh, the uh, uh, PSAP in Ventura County was notified by the post Coast Guard. That initiated an immediate response, as you uh, believe heard this morning from Ventura County Fire Department out of Oxnard. They uh, re responded with two fire boats. Uh, upon arrival, arrival at the scene of the incident, they uh, encountered a fully involved wooden uh, vessel uh, in the waters off of Santa Cruz Island. Uh, they began to extinguish the flames uh, and uh, then notified the county fire department here in uh, Santa Barbara. We continue, the county fire department continues today, we will offer our uh, expertise uh, in investigations on cause and origin along with the team from the sheriff, uh, uh, Sheriff Bill Brown's office, and then we'll also provide incident support uh, uh, throughout this uh, incident. Thank you. My name is Joyce Dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y. I am the district attorney of Santa Barbara County. I represent the people of Santa Barbara County, and on behalf of the people of Santa Barbara County, I want them to understand and everyone to understand how much we understand what everyone is suffering from as a result of this. People all over the world, and we appreciate those thoughts, and our primary concern are the victims and their loved ones, and we will continue to address their concerns as quickly as we can. Santa Barbara County shares jurisdiction over these waterways and the area around uh, Santa Cruz Island with the U.S. Attorney. I've been speaking with the U.S. Attorney Nick Hanna since this morning. We will continue to communicate with each other constantly and to address any jurisdictional concerns, monitor the investigation, and help in any way we can. Again, to those who are suffering as a result of this tragedy, you have our support and our love. Ryan Smith, Assistant Chief, Governor's Office of Emergency Services, Law Enforcement Branch. On behalf of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services, we send our condolences to the victims and the families. Please know the thoughts of our entire state are with you during this tragic incident. Early this morning, the state's California Master Mutual Aid Plan was activated, resulting in multiple law enforcement, search and rescue, and corners resources being immediately dispatched to Santa Barbara to assist with the local and federal resources actively engaged in this incident. As this incident continues, we remain committed to ongoing collaboration with our local, state, and federal resources to respond to this tragic incident and fully support them in their ongoing efforts. This is a very complex, tragic, and sensitive incident requiring various resources and specialized training. Highly trained public safety personnel from throughout the state are on scene and engaged with our local partners and will remain committed throughout the response as well as into recovery operations. And I just want to reiterate our thoughts and prayers for the victims of this tragic incident, their families, and the Santa Barbara community as a whole. Good afternoon. My name is Suzanne Grimacy. I work with the County of Santa Barbara, the Department of Behavioral Wellness. Today is Labor Day. I know people probably had many plans ranging from working or spending time with family and friends. I'm sure nobody planned to have their day spent the way it is now and waking up to the news that we received. We have a family assistance center that is set up at Warren Hall at Earl Warren Showground. The family assistance center will be open through 9 p.m. tonight, open again at 9 a.m. tomorrow. We plan to stay open through Thursday, but really to stay open as long as is needed. The Assistance Center is a place where family, friends, loved ones, community, a place where people can come to get information, to get support, to get mental health counseling, and to get resources. The center is staffed by the county's Department of Behavioral Wellness, for mental health counseling. We have clergy, chaplain, Red Cross, Hospice of Santa Barbara, Sheriff's Department, Fire, and others working together as a team. 
In addition, the county has a public information line that can be called. That number is 833-688-5551. So we'll carry on together as we get more information and learn new findings as the days progress. Hope that you will take care of yourself well and take care of others. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna. Thank all of our speakers. Uh, we now uh, be in a position to take some questions from you. Let me, let me get him first. Are you hopeful that more survivors will be found? Well, we're always hopeful that there would be more survivors found, and the search and rescue operation continues today and will through tomorrow morning, uh, doing everything that we can uh, to try to see if anyone could have survived this. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I, I don't know that there is a black box on a vessel like this, and uh, I, I couldn't answer that question for you. A clarification on the timeline. You said that the trip was supposed to end tomorrow. Correct. Today. Tomorrow morning it was supposed to end. Tuesday, Tuesday morning. You said um, you mentioned that the fire's boat uh, is fully involved in the coast guard ride. Does anybody have a sense of whether it was? Um, the initial reports that were received in the Mayday were that the fire was underway. There were no initial reports of an explosion. There have been several media reports about uh, potential for an explosion or explosions. Um, that could be, it's just speculation, but obviously that could be uh, scuba tanks or, or uh, propane tanks or other things that could be blown up in the fire. But there's nothing that would, in, in the initial broadcast from the vessel that indicated that there was an initial explosion. We don't know that at this point. I, you know, and I think it's, you have to understand, this is probably the worst case scenario you could possibly have. You have a vessel that's on the open sea that is in the middle of the night. I mean, at 3.30 in the morning, um, fire is the scourge of any uh, ship. And, uh, you know, the vessel, this, you know, if not everybody, most everybody was asleep at this time. The, the, the majority of the people were the passengers on the ship. And the sleeping compartment was on the bottom deck of the ship. So they would have been sound asleep when this fire started. So you can imagine that of all scenarios, to be in a remote location, have a fire that occurs, have limited, if any, firefighting capabilities that could address that, and then to have all of a sudden a fire that spread very, very rapidly, uh, you, you couldn't ask for a worse situation. Sir, how much of the coastline has been searched so far? What are the water conditions? Uh, can you yeah, could you repeat that question? Yeah, I know that I, I can't tell you exactly how much has been searched, and I don't know if Captain Rochester can, can address that, but certainly the island itself, the, the coastline has been checked. I don't have the, uh, the actual specific uh, a length or a amount, but what I can tell you is that we continue the search around the island itself, as well as um, uh, the water currents have indicated uh, that moving to the west. So we will concentrate our efforts also to the west as well. Captain, do boats, have, do boats like that, is there a protocol for escape hatches for below decks uh, people on boats of that particular design? Uh, usually that design is required to have an emergency escape hatch. And what does that usually involve? What kind of a escape hatch? Uh, it's usually... Um, Leads, you, leads the individuals out onto the main deck from their, from what we would call their accommodation spaces, their sleeping quarters. Did you know if there was one there? Was it locked? Was it closed? Uh, I don't have that information. Was there any investigators that they said would they try to rescue? Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Um, has, the, has the crew spoken to investigators? Have they said if they had any rescue efforts themselves? Uh, the crew, uh, the crew that was interviewed um, today by, um, Santa Barbara sheriffs, as well as um, some Coast Guard investigators, but I, I don't have the knowledge of, of what was discussed. Was it 33 people or 34 Okay, let's clarify that. It was a total of 39 people on board, six of which were crew, and 33 were passengers. And only five, so, and only five passengers? Where were you whoa, whoa, whoa. One question at a time, please. 
So it's a total of 39 people on board. Of that are six crew members and 33 passengers. That is unaccounted for. That is correct. Yes, there were. I, I, I can't speak to that. The investigation is ongoing. So the Coast Guard Communications Center uh, explained to me that when the call came in, the vessel was already totally engulfed in flames. That's exactly how it was relayed to us. No, I, I don't have any of that information. Excuse me, say that again. So the boat has sank, and now it's inverted, and it's on the seabed. It's on the floor in approximately 60, 62 feet of water. Have you had a chance to look the vessel operator's record? Excuse me. Excuse uh, vessel is inspected annually by the Coast Guard. Have you had a chance to look at the vessel operator's record? Have they had violations? They have been in full compliance with, with regulatory requirements. Hold on just a second. You had someone behind you that was trying to ask a question. I, I don't have that information. Um, per, that will come out probably through an, an investigation. The Coast Guard itself will launch what we call a formal Marine uh, inquiry, Board of Inquiry. So there will be a team of Coast Guard folks that will come out and, and commence that process. I'm sorry, say again? We do have a list of passengers. Uh, right now, we're working on the next uh, next of kin notifications, identification. The sheriff, uh, sheriff Bar uh, Santa Barbara Sheriff Office, has the lead on that. So, I I, I don't have that have that answer, and and I'm going to go ahead and uh, relinquish my opportunity for somebody else to speak on behalf of this incident. And you've been listening to a live briefing from Santa Barbara with the principals involved in today's search and rescue operation for that dive boat, which uh, caught fire this morning near Santa Cruz Island. Lance Orozco is at the site of that briefing. And Lance, we did pick up some new information. Uh, quite a bit of new information, Duncan. Of course, uh, you know, we still don't really know what happened. One of the big questions was, was there an explosion that led to this? And uh, as the Coast Guard pointed out, they said there are several instances of media reporting that, but they say they have no evidence to back that up. Um, the numbers have not changed. We're still talking about 39 people on board the boat. Now, one thing that we did learn was that there were five crew members who were rescued, but there's a sixth crew member who is among the missing right now. Uh, they confirmed once again that we have four were dead that we know about, and those are four bodies that were recovered, uh, two adult men, uh, two adult males, and two adult females. They also say, uh, Sheriff Bill Brown said they found four other additional victims who were on the ocean floor, and he said that they're in the process of recovering those bodies. So that's a total of eight bodies recovered. Now, uh, Ca Captain Monica Rochester with the Coast Guard said that it is still considered to be a search and rescue mission at this point. They are still actively looking for people. They don't consider it to be a recovery. And, of course, in a search and rescue parlay, when it turns to a recovery, that means they don't expect to find anyone else alive. But at the same time, she says we will continue to search through the night into tomorrow morning. But she also warned us that we should be prepared for the worst, uh, that it's not looking good at this point. Uh, one of the interesting questions was about the currents, about what's happening out there, where they're looking. And, and uh, uh, again, this was uh, Monica Rochester with the Coast Guard was talking about the fact that there's a strong west current. And this, this happened on the north side of Santa Cruz Island, on the ocean side of, of the island. Uh, uh, and one of the things she said about this, um, or I'm, I'm sorry, the, the side of the island towards the coast is what I was trying to say to um, uh, one of the things she was saying, though, is with the strong west current, that gives them an idea of where to look if there's somebody who perhaps was able to get out and they've got a life preserver and they're floating along because it's possible, especially with the fog that we had earlier this morning, that you know they have traveled quite a distance if they got caught up in, in the currents. So, uh, again, that search is actively going on right now. Um, one of the things that our district attorney, uh, Joyce Dudley, who's Santa Barbara County's district attorney, was part of this, and, and you're going, well, why would the district attorney be part of this? Because there's an investigation that takes place, and she said that she's working with federal investigators on this to find out if there's something, you know, that would rise to the neighborhood of, of criminal. But 
At the same time, one of the questions that came up at this briefing was, was this boat inspected regularly? And the answer from the Coast Guard was yes. It goes through annual inspections. Um, did it have a record of violations? And the answer to that was no. In fact, they said the boat was in full compliance with all the regulations as far as safety is concerned. So, so that was one of the things that was addressed. They did say that they had an opportunity to talk to the crew members of both the Santa Barbara County Sheriff's Department investigators and the Coast Guard. Both had the chance to talk to uh, some of the injured um, crew members, but uh, at this point, they're not really talking about the nature of that. And as you can imagine, an investigation of this is something that won't be measured in days or weeks. Um, you know, we're going to learn some some little details in the next couple of days. And then what usually happens with something like this, it kind of goes silent. We won't hear anything uh, because investigators will, you know, will be working on a report and they might release a, a partial report in a month or two. Um, but if there's nothing obvious, it, you know, it could take several months before we come up with some kind of conclusion. And one of the difficult things, Duncan, I got to tell you that they're working on here is, you know, uh, just like any fire that happens on land, that you try to determine the cause of it, the source of it, what triggered this, if there was an explosion or if it was just a fire, what, what was the cause of that? And as, as Sheriff Bill Brown mentioned, the boat is inverted. It's upside down. It's in 60 feet of water, not terribly deep. Not terribly, terribly far off the coast. It's in less than 100 feet off the coast, but um, it's in very, you know, because the boat was basically destroyed by the fire, um, it's in very fragile condition. So it's too dangerous for them. They were saying they basically can't even go into it at this point. But at some point, investigators are hoping to get a closer look at that wreckage to try to figure out, to try to get some kind of idea of how this whole thing happened. So uh, as you mentioned, Duncan, we kind of started out here. <laughs> We've learned a, a lot um, in the last couple of hours is about what's happening. But I think the big thing we need to know is, is basically that um, eight people have been accounted for, unfortunately, eight fatalities. So at this point, that leaves us, if my math is right here, 26 people are still considered missing. The Coast Guard, again, telling us it's an active search. They're going to continue through the night tonight and into tomorrow. But at the same time, warning us, we do need to pre be prepared for the worst, the, the possibility that there may not be additional survivors. Lance, and, there was.